Take off fish wipes. Fish wipes. Fish wipes. All right, welcome, welcome everybody. Welcome. Shut up, Malcolm. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> welcome to the Where Is Dion podcast. We're back to do the recap for Power Rangers season one, episode five to ten. As always, I am humanoid. Along with my partner in crime, the Dwayf Master himself. Say hi. Hi. Yeah. Uh, sorry, I had AJ Styles on the mind. Everybody has AJ Styles on their mind. And we have a special guest today. He's a newbie to this all. He's just started watching Power Rangers, so he's an outside perspective. He is dead true. Hi, it's me, Mighty Morphin Michael Vick. Mighty Morphin Michael Vick. Jesus. All right. Yeah, he's coming in hot. He's br coming in brand new to this series. He has some yeah, thoughts I'm about it. Relatively new. Yeah. I mean, so, I do have thoughts about it. He's more of a so Sentai Adam fan. Yes, yes. Uh, so, so, sorry to interrupt. Uh, yeah, but yeah, you, you are more of a Sentai fan yeah. and common writer I tokusatsu guy. More, more Japanese tokusatsu. More yeah, Sentai I'm, fan. I'm the Jap I'm the Japanese yeah. stud. I'm the kind of person that says d uh, subs before dubs. No, I'm not actually that person. Okay. So, <laughs> so uh, tell us um, about your personal history with Power Rangers before we begin. Well, if any. Um, it, there is some. Uh, you, um, Malcolm Doif, uh, you did uh, show me a few episodes of SPD a while back, and that was my first exposure to Power Rangers. Mm -hmm. uh, that was an experience, and I can't wait to get back to the series uh, eventually. Uh, I it have definitely is. It, it definitely is a trip and a change from uh, Mighty Morphin. Yeah, I have also seen a couple episodes of RPM. Also, get also thanks to the Doy. Oh, RPM is a good, RPM is a good season. Uh, I can't wait to get there. RPM is probably the best season. It's, I can't that, wait. That's gonna get so much. Like, if this podcast managed to kicks off the ground, I may have buried myself early with that uh, line I just said. In space yeah. and RPM are pretty much up there. Same with Wild Force and Time Force. Wild I'm... Force? Yeah, you Wild Force is pretty banging. Well, Wild actually... Force is pretty good, but not the best. Uh, okay, yeah. not the best, but yeah. That actually does lead me into something I forgot to mention. When I was young, like six years old, I had a PC ROM game of Power Rangers Time Force that I played the fuck out of. Nice. Uh, nice. It was pretty fun. It was just a bunch of stupid mini games, but it was pretty fun. Uh, and more recently, and by which I mean a couple days ago, I started watching Power Rangers with you guys. Uh, Mighty, Mighty Morphin, Morphin specifically. Uh, today, I watched the pilot, and I have some thoughts about it. <laughs> Let's hear about the pilot, since he just uh, started watching so... it. I didn't, yeah, I didn't see your uh, episode on the pilot in episodes one through four yet. I will go back and watch it after I've watched them myself. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Um, so the pilot is fucking garbage. Uh, yeah, Zoltar. Uh. <laughs> yeah, no, fucking Zoltar, the wavy butt plug in space. Uh, no, no he, he he's a wavy butt plug from the TV show Reboot. Yes. That is true. That is true. Uh the other two thoughts I have on the pilot are that the face morphing scene where they morph into the actual dinosaurs from Ju from the Sentai version, uh, Zhu Ranger. Uh, that was very fun. Cause th that is, those are the dinosaurs from the Zhu Ranger intro, like the, the, yeah. the ones they morph into. That's very fun. Uh, and I am in the minority of people that actually think that Alpha 5's original pilot design is better than the one in the main show. Really? Yeah, he kind of looks a little bit better. Morph into. I, I don't know. I think better. it's just his head looks sleeker. And I know that I'm in the minority about that, but I think it's good. Uh, I also watched episodes one and two. Those were very fun, very 90s, very cringe. Cheesy, 90s cheese. Yeah, yeah, 90s cheese is uh, definitely something with me that I am not very familiar with. <laughs> yeah. uh, I say that being born in the 90s. But uh, yeah, no, I'm I'm curious to see what this series has been about because I, I'm surrounded by people that all love the show. And uh, let's see what I think of it. Uh, but 
that uh, will conveniently leave us lead us on to uh, episodes five through ten. Right. And speaking of episodes five through ten, episode five, different drum. <laughs> Different which was the drum. first episode the first episode of Mighty Morphin I have ever watched. It's very true. Very true. Oh, also he's seen some of Lost Galaxy, but we decided to go all the way to the beginning. I forgot about that. Yeah, I did watch like nine episodes of Lost Galaxy with you nerds. Yeah. Oh, then we decided, you know what, fuck it. Let's just start from the beginning. Because why not? Yeah. It, is Fair that enough. why you decided the name of the podcast is the Damon Podcast? The Damon Podcast? No, mm-hmm. it, no, 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 no. It's the Where's Dion? It's an inside joke between me and a friend because, like, we used to do a lot of videos together, and then he just disappeared. I still talk to oh, I, I still talk friend, to him. Yeah. I still talk to him once in a yeah. while, but he just doesn't do any videos anymore. So, just out of joke, do do? just out of a joke, I say I'm starting a podcast in your name and never have you on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When, when we do Lost Galaxy, we need to call it, re, rename it the Where is Damon podcast. Yeah, Damon Henderson. The Damon Henderson? Okay. Yeah. Let's, so, season one, episode five, uh, the, 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 the different drum. Um, this episode, if I remember correctly, it starts off with Ernie doing a jig. But the big thing I got from this episode particularly of... Well, Firstly, the monster of the week is uh, the gnarly gnome. The, fucking um, the gnarly gnome. gnome. Using not a Ganelf. <laughs> using hyp- using <laughs> hypnosis. Gnome. Using hypnosis uh, to um, basically control them, c- control the teens and whatnot uh, throughout the episode. But the crutch, uh, the the crutch of the ep- the crutch, the crutch of man, the episode. Cruts. That's it. The crutz of the episode yeah, is uh, this uh, sign language kid here. Let's see, yeah, or sign girl. language teen, deaf girl. I can't remember what her name was. I can't I think remember her if name I... was Melissa. Melissa. I think so. Yeah, but the interesting thing is early character development for Kimberly, which blew me away, was she knows sign language, which is something completely out of left field. Because, like, episode one, she's talking about how her hair keeps getting tangled in the suit and how she thinks that the fucking pterodactyl robot, the pterodactyl zord has a fucking really nice stereo. And here she is popping sign language out. Well, in the first couple of episodes, she was a hardcore valley girl, but she gets away from that in the next kind of episodes. I mean, if this is good character development. development. This is good character development for Kimberly. I'm very much okay with that. Yeah, she's got a great character. To, she has a good character arc. I mean, it's interesting to see character development like this uh, this early in the show and this in this particular season as well because Mighty Morphin famously is mostly filler. Yeah. Yeah. Up until you get to Turbo and in space. Mm-hmm. It, famously, it seems like with Mighty Morphin, uh, the real, like, storyline stuff is uh it generally comes with the appearance of someone we will talk about in an episode or two but i will not because i want to save all i have to say about that individual until then who's the individual seriously who are we talking about we're we're literally like six episodes away from the oh okay right 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 i thought you were talking about i thought you were talking about ricardo medina jr but never mind who wants to talk about Ricardo Medina Jr. <laughs> yeah. it's like I'm hinting at a big character. Yes, Ricardo <laughs> Medina Jr. Even yeah, yeah, yeah. Ricardo Medina Sr. doesn't want to talk about Ricardo Medina Jr. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. Like the guy's probably nice, but he's no you know. Yeah, who. very true. Very yeah. true. I'm just saying what he yeah. did in real life is but yeah. But that, mm. yeah. I I also oh, wanna uh, mention that uh there's another piece of character development we got uh, near the end of this episode with more uh, with the first ever Billy is a man whore moment because <laughs> his his woman count starts from this show because he's like oh, yeah. he's is, the ladies man. Yep. Billy's body Billy's... count is officially at one. Yes. Yep. With the deaf girl, way to way to start off strong. Yeah. But like so they go into a cave and the one thing that the deaf girl is. Can't move is a goddamn net. 
<laughs> yeah, because yeah, not a net, not the net, Ned's not the net. To this day, I still laugh at that part. I was like, oh no, foiled by a net. I, I do, I do think it's a very cool, um, like way to add like a moral for uh, accepting others as as a kids show. Yeah, they did is, a lot. Uh, they did you a know, lot in the show. Yeah, like the ability, like the deaf girl is immune to the gnar to the gnarly gnome's hypnosis because the gnarly gnome's hypnosis is the accordion, which, to be fair, is the effect that Weird Al Yankovic has on me. But uh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's a powering industry. Like every episode had like a moral to the story. Every like that's how nineties TV shows were. Every that's, it's a kids show. Yeah, definitely. Uh, it's not actually a kids show. It's for anyone. <laughs> it's it's mostly a kids show, but people love it anyway. P adults love it. They go back and watch it. I only say that to bother Malcolm. Yeah. I have a few joke lines here, which is perfect for uh, that line, which you will now punish for. I have a note here that says bulk is a fusion of you and I. <laughs> yeah, I'm the one that said that. I know, and I nearly pissed myself when you first said that because that was yeah, scarily accurate. True. Yeah, it's he, like he has he has your fashion sense, my and your hair. He has my fat, and combined, he has the he has the comedic timing and comedic chops of Chris Farley in with transcended to godhood. Yes, and Chris I, Farley and Jack Black combined. Jack, yes, well, Jack Black was starting to. Become somebody, but he was early in his career at this time. But Chris Farley was the main. Yeah, like dude. Jack Black yeah. is only in. Jack Black's only been in like a couple things, and like it's still like five. Like I think this is ninety three, right? So yeah. this is like around the year of Never Ending Story three. Not until like yeah, he was yeah, not around ninety seven, ninety eight is when he started to become known. But no one remembers Never Ending Story three because everyone was <laughs> like, oh yeah. hell yeah. But yeah, yeah bulk, then... <laughs> bulk though, he's like for a big dude, he's pretty spry. He can go really fast. As this, as this is my first, like this was my first introduction to Bulk and Skull was this episode, and yeah, I fucking love him. I'm I can't hate them. Uh, yeah. I love Bulk's comedic chops and his pratfall cartoon comedy. Yeah, and I love that Skull is just the straight man with just repeating everything that bulk says and also that hyena na uh, hyena laugh haunts my nightmares yeah you're gonna get, get used, used to that you're gonna that. hear it a lot he does that a lot yeah that's his cat you're know. gonna yeah, as, as i said get used to it you're gonna hear it a lot my ears will bleed <laughs> yeah so uh, continue so yeah, the, 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 sorry, so yeah they they uh they they uh the the blind chick or sorry the deaf chick what the fuck am I saying the deaf chick can't get through the net uh and then the Power Rangers come in and uh, they obviously get through the net yes uh they you know fight the gnarly gnome they defeat him and then we get our my first uh, Megazord sequence which I have to point out uh, I don't know if you did in the first episode but holy shit. The fucking composer who did all of the guitar riffs Ron is Wasserman. a fucking legend. Ron Wasserman. But Wasserman. before you Ron. do that, you, sir, are jumping ahead because we missed a few things. So sorry, go ahead. Cut the fuck up, because. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. So, because I have a few notes here first before we get to that point. Uh, one, the monster looks like an asterisk wet dream paralysis demon. I had yeah. to make that clear. Yep. Uh, yeah, no, that's true. He's and you, paralysis. sir, sir, yeah. the reason you skipped over is because we forgot to mention the bloody changing of the names of the power weapons in this. Oh, oh my I'm, God. You're yeah. fucking right. I forgot about that because this is my first episode. I thought it was perfectly normal. And honestly, I'm going to be real with you all guys. This these names are way fucking better than the generic power X <laughs> power X power. blow. Yeah. Power yeah, it honestly, actually you, works, except the for the one, one that, except for the fact that they called Billy's lances or whatever he has a, they mace. It a mace, battle mace it's or something mace. like yeah. that. If you could have, if you called it the mystic ma the mystic lance instead of the mystic mace, everything would have been fine. But seriously, cosmic cannon, uh, I think power bow is still the same, but dino dagger, the one that stayed the same. Sword are also very good. The one that stayed the same the entire time with the power sword by Jason. I'm pretty sure the the bow is also called the power bow. Yeah, I think it was battle bow or something. I, the I battle it? bow. Battle okay. bow. Yeah. It, yeah. No, but then if that case, like literally, three out of the five names are better. Yeah. Cosmic cannon. I like that. 
Cosmic Cannon is sounds like the finisher of a like like the ultimate like if all of the Lost Galaxy Rangers put their weapons together and fired a gun, that's what that should be called. Right, I agree, sir. Okay, and so uh, do, do do you guys remember the exact names of all of them? Because I didn't write them down. The Cosmic Shut Cannon, up. Battle Bow, Mighty Mace, uh, the uh, the Dino Daggers, Dino Daggers, Jesus Christ, and Power and, Sword was yeah, the Power only Sword. yeah. Power Sword was the only one that didn't change. Now we get to the Megazord fight. Yeah, I'm I'm sorry. That that's my bad. It's uh, all good. No, it's all good. It's, it's all just good. literally we had to talk about that. Yeah, no, you're right. I completely forgot about that. Uh but yes, Ron Wasserman, uh you absolute legend Wasserman. with your Wasserman, sorry. With your fucking amazing guitar riffs and your like literally Part of why I love Super Sentai so much is the soundtrack, and I'm not going to talk too much about Sentai. I apologize. Yeah. But literally, the 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 bat the robot fights, like the mech fights, have the best music in the entire series. And oh, if I you think, think Ron that's Wasserman, if you think I think that, Ron Wasserman sorry. really did this justice. If he you think that's amazing, did. if you think that's amazing, yeah, wait, um, wait for until the Green Ranger theme song. Go oh, Green oh. Ranger. Or White go Ranger, Green Ranger, or the or the fight go. song later on. There's a fight song with like one, two, fight. It's like God damn, it's so good, so I will, good. I will. I I'm gonna be the resident music nerd of this uh, of this podcast. Yeah, and I'm gonna love every piece of music because I'm a huge music guy. Up until and, Turbo, uh, the music is cool. Up until Turbo, where they it's just gone. A little bit downhill. I'm sure I'll still like stuff after Turbo, but like yeah. Ron Wasserman. The thing is, is, the with um, it lasts pretty good. Like it stays pretty good for a while because Ron Wasserman stays on for I want to say the uh till Lost uh in space is like his final season. I don't know if he does anything for Lost Galaxy. He's a little, does a little but, bit for Lost Galaxy, but in space yeah, is his last official. Yeah, but then okay. he comes back for SPD. Nice. All right. Uh, that that's and, great news. And he did uh well we'll get to when we get to the seasons, but he also did sample pieces for a couple other seasons, but uh SPD was pretty much his final season of like uh, his final theme for the series, which is very unfortunate because I would have loved to have one final Wasserman theme. Yeah, yeah, it's a good way to go out with You, sir, are a credit to this uh, to this series, and your your dedication will not be forgotten. Ron Wasserman, yes, yes. So anyway, the but so anyway, the Zord fight was pretty good. Zord fight was note, great. The uh, the only note I have for this particular Zord fight is the monster's music is making the Z Megazord see Hiroshima apparently. Oh uh, yeah, no, yeah, because this like it, it, you can't hypnotize the Rangers or the Zords because uh you know plot armor. So instead of it, his music hypnotizing them, it just teleports them to the set of a destroyed Godzilla movie. They go to the mountains of Japan, which they always do. And they this... literally, they literally are just in a destroyed Japanese like Toho city. And then, uh, of course, the power sword summons slain monster dead. Deaf girl saves the day, pretty much. And Rita Billy once gets again body talks about her headache. Uh, no count, no adding to the headache count just yet. We are still at three. Oh yeah, no, you're right. My bad. Uh, so. And then we cut to season one, episode six, Food Fight. Food fight. Probably Food one of fight. my favorite episodes. Which is significantly better than the last thing I watched that was named Food Fight. Oh, nobody talks <laughs> about that. Oh, God. <laughs> okay, so we open up with immediately, more than likely, some uh, pulling on collar moments with, I'm pretty sure, teenagers in hula skirts. Yeah, um, I'm pretty, risky. Yeah, I'm guessing they're teenagers in hula skirts and early But I mean, but I mean, I, I, I was mean watching a panel with uh, Polly and Jason where they were talking about it, but Bulk and Skull, where they're like, "There's some yeah. stuff in the early days I really liked, but then some other stuff I look back at it where I'm just like, it's there's like, a lot of stuff in the show that you'll look back on and go, like, yeah. 
I mean, the principal was there. I'm sure he sanctioned it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Kaplan. Uh, Mr. Kaplan. The first time I saw him, I go like, why is the principal at a youth center? But then he explained that they're doing it for the preschool and stuff. It's charity. charity. So Yeah, it's he's, probably he's like out. an after-school program. After school yeah, program. definitely is like a one a of the many thing. One of the many after school yeah. programs that these kids constantly do. So we see a bunch of different uh cultural, you know, food stands. We have like an Asian we have an Asian stand. We have like a Mexican stand, I'm pretty sure. We have uh uh the and most of course of the, the American most, stand as burgers. Yeah, burgers, and most just of the burgers. And most of the Rangers are at the American stand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Kim and like Jason, everyone except for... the, the two particular Rangers they got to sit there are the two whitest in Jason and Kimberly. Yeah. And uh, like the only other, like Trini's at the Asian stand. And then, like, I think Zach and uh, Billy was his well, Trini. Zach is... bit... Billy was with Trini. And then Zach is just kind of roaming around. Zach is doing the African American stand. Oh yeah, no, you're right. I forgot about the Afro American stand. Yeah. Uh, and, and then of course, and there, yeah, there's also a stand that's just labeled hot, 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 hot. Just hot, hot, hot. And then of course, we'll get... bulk and skulls show up, and start the it... titular food fight. Well, no, before that, firstly, they have four members of their gang now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Would they brought never... back the gang from the pilot. <laughs> It, no, no, that's not, no, not even the, they, Bulk and Skull technically weren't even really in the pilot. This there bulk. was crazy-ass, pointy-haired Bulk. Yeah, yeah, and some other dude that wasn't Skull. But then in, but, like, an album. But, um, but uh, particularly with uh, Bulk and Skull, they had, like, a gang in the early seasons, but then, of course, they petered off after a while when they slowly faded from being bullies. But uh, now they, they have a fourth face. member. What kills me about this Bulk and Skull bit is that he, he I can't remember if it, I think it's Bulk, he perfectly throws a pie and snipes Principal Kaplan's bloody toupee perfectly. <laughs> it's yeah. toupee. Okay, and that uh, that was going to lead me into what I was going to say about the food fight. In Principal Kaplan, his toupee fly is flo is flown off by a beautiful pie shot it lands in the punch bowl and then he the dirty fucker <laughs> rings out his toupee in the fucking punch bowl you sick fuck <laughs> oh well, it's probably the only one he's got he's working off of a teacher's salary like in the 90s yeah, I know, but, like, yes. but like ringing you would at least take it out of the punch bowl and then ring it out like on the tablecloth or something no no, you just push all of that sweat and, you know, whatever in your toupee into the fucking punch. Yeah. You yeah. fucking foul fucker. This is Kaplan, you no dirty fuck. No wonder you okayed the fucking hula girls. <laughs> well, I, well, look, all they need is a Brita and it'll be fine. Brita filter? Yes. Brita filter. I think so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just put the fruit punch through the Brita filter. It'll be fine. Yeah. So, uh, a food fight, food fight, hullabaloo, hullabaloo. A lot of fun, like, dumb food fight moments. Like, your typical so, cliche food fight. We get Rita uh, early in this episode. Um, I don't know if she wanted to get involved with the food fights uh, specifically. No, she says she was sick, and she just week. wanted to get rid of the food because she was sick and looking at it. But yeah. this Rita is petty. Is a, this monster of the week is a big one. Because there's oh, many paid. different monsters that are iconic throughout this season series, but the big one or one of them is Pudgy Pig, and that is this episode. Pudgy Pig has a Funko Pop, and I didn't notice it until I was at Mel's the other day watching Revolution. Yeah, and I'm like, she, she has a fucking punk. She has a Pudgy Pig Funko Pop, which is amazing because Pudgy Pig is awesome. Did we gotta get Mel on this podcast. She's watched the first. Yeah. I only watched the first. I think she's only she seen the first three seasons. She has a Kimberly specific morpher. She's got Kimberly. I got Jason. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. So Pudgy Pig. You need to get old. Billy. Yeah. Ooh, uh, yeah. Adam, you need to get Billy. Oh, what? Because I'm a nerd? Yes. Um, <laughs> uh, Andreas, you should get. Uh, Trini, <laughs> as you're closest to ethnic as possible. 
<laughs> fun, no. fun fact. You, you, ever, you remember those uh, Power Ranger toys where you flip the head and they have the helmets? I had oh, one yeah. of those. Yeah, I had, I had uh, Tommy, Jason, Billy, and Zach, all four of them. I didn't get the girls because I was young kid. I go like, girls are not great. I just need the guys. It's like, if I got in a complete set, it's like, it's like, if I had in a complete set, that'd be great, but I don't. Shit, damn. Yeah. yeah. I know all I had was, I don't know if it was Jason or Rocky back then, but. I Because it was one of the two. Okay, let's see. Oh, uh, so yeah, uh, food fight, pudgy pig basically eats everything. For some reason, radishes are spicy. Yeah, there's some that, radishes that's that are spicy. That, that's something like okay, it's definitely how they did it in the Sentai episode that involved the pig monster. Uh, so apparently, there's this really spicy. I, I think it's a type of root actually in Japan, but uh, in in Power Rangers in the in the American, they just consider it a radish. So there's just this really. It looks like a little white carrot. Little white carrot. And uh, but, uh, yeah, there's just in, a bunch of them at the food Rangers, fight. Pudgy in, Pig in the comes to the the, the food festival so and just, eats a bunch really, of food at the fo- like... at the food festival. He does not touch the radishes because they're too spicy. So the plan is we sneak the radish into his food, and he will cough up our weapons because earlier they they fought pudgy pig and pudgy pig ate the weapons mm, okay all right and so we get to my favorite part of the episode where they produce five perfectly you know random items food items there's a cake uh random there's cake. a uh there's a steak i'm pretty sure is one of them big hoagie uh, there's a couple of there's a couple there's a couple others and then uh trini has a a beautiful uh big hero sandwich it's like you know big baguette with you know some lettuce tomato in there i'm pretty sure there's some meat and she slips the radish in there and then she eats it into pudgy pig's mouth and uh he coughs up the weapons and gets inflated oh deflated deflated (laughs) gets deflated and is is uh yeah thrown away Okay, so and then that's how, uh, that's, how, that's how they defeat him. Which the is pretty awesome. weirdest thing about this episode, in my opinion, is that there's no Zord fight. Yeah, I think it's the first there episode where they fight. Didn't, it was just a, it was a very easy defeat on their part. Like they didn't even summon the Zords, which was strange. Like no Mega Zord happens on occasion, but no Zord sometimes that that like rarely happens. So this is the first time we might as well keep a track of it. First time there was no Zord uh, fight or mention, or Mega Zord fight. Yes. Yeah, no, that's what I meant. Uh, and then and we cut I, back I, to we. I am we keeping to... track. Oh, sorry, you're, you're keeping track. Go ahead. Oh, uh, I am also keeping track in my notes uh, where the episode is. Just I'm I'm putting a cross where there's like important stuff for the show like stuff that isn't filler yeah so like no megazords yeah gotcha mm-hmm. uh so we cut back to the food festival that is now very much destroyed and there's like no food left except for a little a few more radishes uh and principal kaplan comes back and he's like uh oh, you know uh, yeah, I know it's not your fault, and at least you tried to clean up a little bit. But do we 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 barely ha- we almost have enough money for the playground, and then they they produce some very nice made food by Alpha Five. Alpha Five made some really nice sandwiches, and uh, then they charge Principal Kaplan twenty bucks for it. Yuck, 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 yuck! And then the episode ends. Yeah, there's always got to be no they always, they always... made the sandwiches because he figured out how to defeat the monster, but he was a little late on the train for that, and they accidentally give Kaplan a pudgy sandwich. Oh yes, and he die. Yeah, he fucking dumps water all over himself, and he's like, "That's hot." Yeah, and they laugh like, like you know what? what? And they begin to laugh like idiots, like they do every other episode, which is kind of annoying, but it's and... the '90s. And, and then we get to that episode 
seven, Ep- which is season so one, with... episode seven, Big Sisters. Big Sisters. Ah, uh, yeah. yes, I remember. We started this one, and Andreas was like, "Ah, Big Sisters," and we're like, "Why do you hate this episode?" Actually, now that I and... rewatch, hold on. Actually, I rewatch rewatching it. It's not that bad. I just had bad when I first started watching it and rewatching it earlier, like. This, does, this episode does have some crazy connotations, though. Yeah, but now that I rewatch it, it with you guys, it's it, way better because, like, eh, okay. Yeah. This specific episode, I <clears throat> I didn't realize, but um, watching this episode, there is so many big character beats or uh, character beats, story moments of four uh that, that that are important for not just this season of the show but literally for seasons decades down the line we'll the get to them get more of the series but, <laughs> yes uh first let's see we start with it's basically like a big brother big sister situation with Trini and Kimberly looking after a kid that looks that does that's not 12 look like years, a kid he's 12 years old but looks 42 at the same time yeah, I was so really, it, really thinking the kid would be annoying, but she really wasn't that bad. Yeah, like they start off by showing off, like, "Oh, where's this kid?" Uh, you know, she's she's supposed she's supposedly a bit of a troublemaker, and then we see a hand turning on the hot water in the showers, and there she is, the forty-two year old child, <laughs> Maria. Maria. There's something Can't to do see. about Maria. What do we do she's about so Maria? The monster of the week this week I have listed here is uh, the Chunky Chicken, a.k.a. Yes. a fucking turkey. The Chunky Chicken I is mean, a turkey, yes. In, it it kind of looks like a chicken. He has scissors. He has scissors. He's a giant chicken. <laughs> Okay, so uh, more uh, a few things I have notes listed here. So we do cut with Rita talking, uh, creating her monster as she usually does. But this particular episode uh, I, is one of the first times uh, or one of the more frequent times I noticed where the switching of Goldar's more villain voice like this and the inevitable voice where he wants to kill the Power Rangers. You do, there ain't you no do, other you, Andy Savage voice. You do that way too good. It's a really good voice, Malcolm. You do that really well. Yeah. Uh, I, another thing, I I didn't get to point it out, uh, but uh, I I just want to shout out the Monster Matic. I love oh, the design of the Monster Matic. The Monster Matic is amazing. Like I said, it's the original one. It's so good. <laughs> It's just a really cool idea that they're just molding their monsters out of like space clay, space and clay. then they just and then they throw it in the monster matic like a kiln, and then they come out and it's like an actual monster. Actually, like, it's, I know that's, it's, mostly, it's, I know that's it's, mostly from Sentai, but like that's an actual really good idea, and I think that like if other seasons did something like this, I think I would care more about the monsters of the week. The, the different seasons have their own way of bringing in monsters of the week, but they're all pretty cool. Some of them, uh, some of yeah. them. Yeah, them it's. Cool. I feel like at a certain point, um, you just really stop caring for the monsters of the week. At at a certain point, it. But again, it does depend, of course, on the season, on the era when you started watching, because like you literally could have attachment to. A monster of the week from of all seasons operation overdrive <laughs> you're bringing that in hey uh, operation well, yeah, operation it. operation overdrive not that bad is what i'm saying not that good either yeah, I, um, I can't <laughs> wait till we get there anyway uh and i've seen the entirety of it so i can actually speak on it yes that's understandable that's like how i feel about common rider wizard <laughs> okay uh so let's see chunky chicken uh this is the big character beat okay so we get the chunky chicken and we get um basically why rita needs this kid because she kidnaps maria and we don't know why at first and it's because she finds these mystical i uh the these three mystical items called the power eggs Yes, yes, inside a treasure chest that only an innocent child can open. After being because sacrificed looked, or whatever. But, because she looked really innocent earlier. <laughs> this 43-year-old uh, lady. 
firstly due to the interference or whatever that's being caused by this um the uh communicators and the teleportation is down to the command center so we ladies and germs get the very first appearance of everyone's favorite flying car from this show the red bug the red baby bug. <laughs> the rad bug which to be fair i thought was stupid at first it's a pretty fucking cool idea i just wish they picked a car that wasn't a bug bro billy is a mad genius he made a flying car <laughs> he did and i'm not i'm not shaming him for that just yeah. pick a better make and model <laughs> yes it's like wait doc so you're telling me you built a flying machine out of a bug yeah how wait out of a like, Volkswagen? But it yes. would be called Bug to the Future. Bug to the Future. Damn it. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> Who plays Biff? Uh, yeah. uh, fucking, what's his name? Uh, shit. Bulk. Uh, Jeff Bulk. Goldblum. Jeff, Jeff no, Goldblum. Jeff Goldblum. Because he was the fly. <laughs> well, oh, what, are you, what uh, uh, you doing here, uh, McFly? Uh, uh, uh. Hello, uh, what's... McFly. <laughs> So uh, we get flight of the rad bug uh, flies into the command center oh so beautifully with 90s green screen technology. And then we get, I believe this is the first time actually uh, when we get, of course, the reintroduction of Alpha and Zordon. The first time he says, behold, the viewing globe. He said it in the first episode. I, he said it in the first episode. Oh, he did? Okay, I think I missed it then. Yeah. He yeah. said, behold the viewing globe so that your doubts may be uh, re- may be cleansed with answers or some bullshit. Yeah. Like, you don't, like, this... like, if, like you don't believe a giant head in a goddamn robot. <laughs> yeah, anyway. But when yeah. he says this, he says something that unknowingly to the creators of the show at the time would change the lore of the show for years to come. When they're talking about the power eggs, they mentioned that they were, I believe, harnessed or found by the Morphin Masters. Which we don't hear from again until Dino Fury, because they... Have have fun. Uh, See you later, seeing Dino and Cosmic Fury. Yeah. Because like they didn't, they, they the... mentioned that one little thing, and they took it and made it a big deal. And Dino, no, Ninja Steel, Ninja Steel. Never mind, they did it first. No, 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 no. You, uh, you, you got it right. It, it was the Dino Fury. But they also said in Ninja Steel a little bit. No, they didn't. They only mentioned, um, they only mentioned the the star, the. Oh, right, right. So Dino Fury, yeah. Okay, all right. Yeah, and then it was Dino Fury, and I believe they said that the Morphing Masters were the creator of the Nexus star. The, the Nexus, Nexus star. Prism? Right, right. Okay, yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah. so it links um, to Cosmic Fury as well. It links Let's to everything. See. Yeah. So then uh, we get, of course, uh, the Rangers going to uh, save the day here, of course. The child that is tied up is very clearly Japanese. <laughs> <laughs> Sentai footage. You gotta work with what you got. See, oh, you gotta work around. Okay, we have a f- we have a few episodes to go till the really funny bit uh, with uh, the monsters, but I believe oh, we do yeah. get a. <laughs> I do. I do believe we get a Zord fight here. Um, we uh, do. Wait, hold on. Don't forget that the chicken slowly cuts a damn rope. Oh yeah, that oh, was yeah, funny. Just totally to kill the like, cat. His, kill the child. His, like, his his blades must have been way too dull. Like he he spends like thirty seconds cutting this fucking rope. Yeah, he does. He so really does. uh, what, yeah, and and one last note: when they eventually go into the Megazord fight, of uh, it's a pretty good fight, of course. I don't think nothing too inventive for this one. Yeah, but, no, it's mostly it's mostly just normal fight, power sword, kill, the end. But the funniest note I have for this one is they, um, I think I caught a continuity error with Power Rangers uh, where they're using later on footage because there's an overhead shot of the Megazord cockpit where you see Red using uh, the, the Green Ranger console. Yeah, that's uh, that, that would be good use of Sentai footage. <laughs> and it, I, I, I really like that. And... Um, it, it, it makes you think why they like specifically chose that other than they probably wanted the overhead shot you and that was the only one they accident. could find. You know they chose I'm that pretty by sure accident. that oh, 
I'm pretty sure that overhead shot comes from the, uh, if I'm remembering correctly, it comes from the 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 uh, the Zoo Ranger Die Ranger movie. Yeah, but I not, think but, so. But, but Malcolm, you gotta remember, Saban didn't know what the hell he was getting himself into. He's like mixing footage here and there. He they didn't know what they were doing until later on. <laughs> the nineties, they didn't have the internet. Was just trying to make a fun nineties TV show for the kids. Yeah, and he succeeded. <laughs> yes, that's exactly the thing. Uh, Paulie and uh, Jason uh, in another panel. I, I watched like a bunch of panels of theirs today. Uh, well, one of the uh, panels, they basically said it's like, well, you see, we had the kung fu and the robots and whatnot, but the one thing we didn't have in the show, unfortunately, was continuity. Yes, I agree. Yeah, exactly. Because there's a bunch of episodes <laughs> later on where like they mention one thing, and then the next episode, they're like, what? We're getting this? And they already introduced it in the earlier episode. Even the continuity of Bulk and Skull is so over the place. It's like one second they're bullies, they're cops, then they're monkeys, and it's just like yeah. a whole other thing. Every, every time I think of the continuity errors, uh, I just Sorry. think of, you know, the chimps, apes. Apes. What? Yeah. Every, apes. every time I think of the continuity errors, I think of just the TFS Krillin own counter uh, <laughs> just popping up in the corner every time there's a continuity error. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, don't forget, Bulk and Skull have the best character arc, they go through a lot. So uh, let's see. For Big Sisters, we get the wrap up. Uh, we get uh, the one last note I have here is that the I think this is the first time the Power Rangers were reported on the news. Yeah, um, they did get a little news thing, and it definitely was not an Angel Grove news board. It was like a different city, so that means that now more people outside of Angel Grove in the canon now know that the Power Rangers exist. Probably Stone Canyon. <laughs> It's like, you know, Stone Canyon is like a rival of Angel Grove later on. I have no idea oh, what yeah. Stone Canyon is. Okay. Yeah. And uh, we will more than likely be talking about Stone Canyon a bit more in, in season, two. season two. Yeah. Stone Fair Canyon, um, yeah. And then, of course, uh, we get the wrap up. Next episode. Another one of my favorite episodes. I, I, guys, season episode eight. It's I, I, I guy. I, I guy. It's an, it's, it's an I robot joke. Yes. <laughs> Pay attention to the punctuation, my dear sir. I, have, I need to go see it. Oh, I robot? Or did you? See, yeah. I think I'm going to be completely honest with you guys. I think out of all of the six episodes we watched for this badge, this one was no, actually, no, the next one was my favorite. Hmm. Let's see. Um, oh, I know what's next. So that's. Bold, yeah. Bold, bold, bold. <laughs> Um, so let's see. Firstly, um, let's see which ones. Oh, yeah. VR invented by Kid. Yeah, yeah. he invented the. VR a, this is the Billy and Willie episode. Billy and Willie. Yeah. He invented the. Billy and his eccentric friend. Yeah. Willie invented a better version of the virtual boy that actually does virtual reality. It makes you feel like you're sitting in three different roller coasters at once. Yes, indeed. Because <laughs> they just now, use different Scott stock footage from different fucking roller coasters for this scene. Maybe they're all in different roller coasters. To be fair, these are actually like I did look it up. These are all stuff like they're stock, but they're all like roller coaster simulator footage. So like these are all things mm. that would be used in an actual roller coaster sim at like Disney World or something. Ah, oh, okay, cool. Let's see. So uh, a few things here. Yeah, the VR invented by Willie, which I a question um, to any listeners out there. If you, if this is posted on YouTube or something, you can comment. Um, is Willie Billy's brother? Who knows? Never knew. Or, never, or, never, or, question. Is, or is Willie just Billy's eccentric friend from like the second grade? Uh, it, it, it was never really calls. answered. I'm guessing it's his brother, but we never see him again. <laughs> it's, it, or, or, or maybe it's like an Ed, Ed and Eddie situation. Yeah. <laughs> but everybody else talks to him, so he is real. He's, he's there, yeah. <laughs> he's real. It's not like Scrubs, where the janitor was supposed to be a figment of JD's imagination. Oh my god, that would be pure evil. It's like he, <laughs> he sticks the penny in the door, gets haunted for years, and it turns <laughs> out he never existed. Exactly. Or it's like that episode of, a, it's like that episode of South Park where everyone's con like, he just is convinced to ignore Cartman, so Cartman thinks he's dead and haunting everyone. <laughs> That's the best one. 
I think that's the one where they really establish him and Butter's relationship. A- anyway, yeah, I gotta get back is. on track. Um, oh yeah, so but before I wrap up, I forgot to say that uh, or uh, b- on the last we episode, uh, b- b- before I guy, I forgot to mention. Um, I the I have a headache counters now at four. Oh yeah, we forgot to mention that, and is I think this is also like the second or third time she asks for an aspirin. I think oh, so. Yeah. yeah, I forgot about I'm that. I'm not going to add aspirin because we already have way too many counters and we're already eight episodes into the show. Yeah, and very most, true. And the most true. famous line is, I got a headache, is more in tune with everybody. It, yeah. Yeah, so we'll, we'll keep that. We'll keep that rolling. Uh, so Willie has this really cool VR headset that he's entering into the science fair. Oh, yeah, you wanted me to continue. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah no. So he's, it... so he's this... entering it into the science fair. I'm sorry. Fuck. I'm. Yeah. No, it's okay. Go on ahead. Yeah, he's entering into the science fair, and uh, then they they cut to the science fair, and Bulk and Skull show up with that awesome incidental music that I love. You know. Yeah. You know. You know what. You know. Skull you know... Show up. But the fun fact, you know what that sound is? Because they actually mentioned it in one of their panels what that was. What was What that? is that? The, ne- the boom, boom, boom is supposed to be the fat guy walking in. And oh, yeah, that yeah. makes sense. And Skull, is Skull's laugh. And that, that, that's actually awesome. <laughs> yeah. I love that. That, that. is beautiful because yeah. literally it's like partnering bulk. And, oh, that's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. So Bulk and Skull show up at the science fair and they do usual Bulk and Skull things. And then, speaking of uh, which, through, how many through... times will Bulk lose his pants? A lot. A lot of times. So, through incidental shenanigans, they end up in what I thought originally was a teleporter, but it's actually a fashion machine that removes their bully clothes and replaces it with drag. And I will tell you, uh, holy shit, Bulk looks really good as a woman. <laughs> yeah. Gonna, That's only because he looks like you when you're in Hairspray. Hairspray, the movie. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, no. Look, we Vulcan get it. You're Skull, hot. Deal with it. Thank you. Uh, Vulcan <laughs> Skull become become women for a bit. Trans rights. Uh, and uh, <laughs> and then they leave. Uh, but because of the incidental bullshit, the he- the head judge of the science fair blames Willie. For- for no reason. And then disqualifies him for no reason other than he's a dick. <laughs> yeah. I'm noticing a pattern in these early episodes where Bulk and Skull uh, constantly get the main five blamed for shit that they do. Yeah, the, it happened uh, with uh, the Pudgy Pig episode. They were blamed for the food fight. And, Even though uh, they yeah. literally were trying to stop it. Yep. That's, uh, that's Bulk and Skull for you. So let's see, we get, uh, oh yeah, the Monster of the Week, uh, which of course it's in the name, but is another iconic uh, Power Ranger iconic. Monster of the Week. Iconic. I got cut, damn. I guy. Little sticks. I hate you guys. Uh, yes, I guy, who at first really terrified me. Yeah, that's what? fair. I could, that, that design really could scare a child. Bro, I was like, Nine when I first saw I guy and that shit scared me. It's a giant eye. He's not the scariest. That he's not the scariest thing in this batch though. Yeah, <laughs> the same. The dude's a giant no, eye. And this, we're believe me, we're gonna talk about the scariest one next. Um, yeah. <laughs> let's see. Uh, one last thing I want to talk about before we get to like uh, the rest uh, of the episode is. The Balkan skull fight isn't normally like their usual shenanigans in this episode. Like we get a mini fight scene. Yeah, a mini fight that also leads to them being dog piled onto a cart, which is then pushed into the fashion nomadic or whatever. Like, yeah, like that's what leads to that. But what got me to thinking about like it just sticking out is the fact that in these early episodes, Bulk and Skull, yes, are bullies, but they aren't treated like the bullies in the pilot, like the somewhat kind of sort of threat where they would fight each other. Like in these episodes, it seems like they were just 
like joke bullies even like the the main they characters kind of didn't even take those kind of bullies seriously like like we'll, in the pilot we'll he's get a, a serious... sample of that we'll, we'll 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 get a sample of something similar to that in season two uh when lord <laughs> zed shows up um the fact that even the school treats them as joke bullies but it's, in it's basically seasons, the first season because in the pilot episode bulk was a serious punk slash bully but in the show they're like kind of a joke we got let's be real they are a joke kind of bully no one takes them seriously but then the, here they are with an actual fight scene with yeah. zach and uh zach and jason like i mean they try but they're still like they do get clowned on a lot but, but i mean that was this is like this is the closest they've gotten to fighting this is an actual fight yeah and like the only other time they've gotten close to this is when bulk was doing karate with uh jason in episode one <laughs> Yes, that too. <laughs> so, uh, let's see what else do I have in my notes here. Um, Billy's younger brother goes missing, kidnapped by I Guy, and stored oh, in and stored realm. in uh, the vortex dimension in I Guy's main eye. He went to Chuck E. Cheese. For some reason, put him in a gravity machine. He just like went to Chuck E. Cheese. Space. The fucking NASA simulator. Uh, that that like because that's how you space that's how you, that's, yeah because that's how you extract knowledge from a child is you <laughs> just put them in through centrifugal forces until their brain dribbles out of their ears. Let's not forget before he got kidnapped, he's at the lake, he is at the pond, and then I got goes like, "Ha ha, you're coming with me." He's like, "Who are you?" Instead of the usual yeah, thing, instead <laughs> of yeah, no, his first words when in reaction to I guy were, "Who are you?" Instead of running the fuck away while saying "fuck," <laughs> yeah. it's like, "What the hell are you?" I with shit slowly filling his uh, khaki overalls, or no, his, his <laughs> denim overalls. His denim overalls. It must be Billy's brother because they're dressed uh, like exactly alike, except except he has a hat. They're both blue. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so this leads into the Power Rangers' main goal being to uh, defeat Eye Guy. Obviously, they uh, fight him free for a while. Basically. Yeah, they fight him for a while and they can't really do anything. So Zordon ch ch chimes in through the uh, communicators, like, "Hey, Billy, you gotta go find the main eye, fucko." <laughs> God, it's obvious. Get at the main eye. Sorry, I didn't tell you earlier. Yeah, I tend <laughs> to do that a lot. <laughs> He goes off by himself to find the main eye and uh, gets shot with fucking lasers. Yes. Dead. Dead. But he gets back up, slices through the main eye, and they uh, they get teleported to the, the vortex dimension, I'm pretty sure, where they fight Eye Guy and uh, defeat him. And then... Is they, Zord they, fight in this one? There is a Zord fight in this one. They save Billy, and then Rita yeets her staff to the ground, and I guy grows. And then they, uh, and then they Zord fight, which is pretty, uh, pretty I don't think... for the Zord fights. There's no notes. Yeah, I don't think there's any stick out for the Mega Zord fight in this particular one. Yeah, Occasionally, no, no. there will be. I do know in the, the second, uh, in the final, in in the final episode, we're going to be talking about. There's more to talk about. Oh, a lot yeah. more to talk about. I thought it was next episode. No, it is. It isn't. Happy nope. birthday, Zach. No, no we, the uh, next episode. I, I have a lot to talk about that one. But not not yet, because uh, there's. I'm trying to remember what the wrap up was. Oh yeah, the wrap up. The uh, the science fair, Billy, of course, gets uh, the blue ribbon. I don't know. If, I don't know if there's any funny um, bulk and skull bit. Oh, no, there is. But they come back uh, in towels. They uh, come back in towels and try and get their clothes back. Well, still in makeup. And, yeah. And while still in makeup, but they're in towels. And uh, they they look at they look at the judge dude and the judge dude's still a dick. But then they're like, "Where are our clothes?" And then they open up the fashionate the fashionator, whatever the fuck it's called. And there are their clothes, but they're really tiny because they shrunk in the dryer. Da 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 da. da, da, da. da. I'll then... be honest, I really wanted there to be a really dark joke where we get skulls like shrunken handkerchief, and he's like. My aunt gave this to me before she died of cancer, and then just <laughs> walks away. It's like, God damn it. No, 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 he says, my aunt gave this to me before cancer. Bam, 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 bam. The dark version, the dark multiverse of the... And it just the... cuts to their fed night. All you see is, like, their stunned faces, like... <laughs> 
oh my god, I'm so sorry, Bulk. And then like it just it, it just freeze frame right there. Yeah. yeah. Of all the times the Rangers can be in complete dicks to them, this is the one time where they cross the line. <laughs> yeah, they, they, they went too far and they're like, they, they, they take like, Skull isn't even like mad. He's just like really sad. He's like, I miss my aunt. Just like how my aunt gave me this thing. And Bulk just hugs him like, it's okay. It gets so dark out of nowhere. <laughs> Bulk just hugs him like, look what you did. Look what you did! I, I, I tell you exactly what it is. It's like that one nostalgia critic joke where they're parodying, parodying that Canadian PSA. Like, you know what, my friend? You you look like you're thirsty. You know what I need when I'm thirsty? A nice cold glass of mountain water. It's like, I, that's what I have every morning. What do you have? I have pancreatic cancer. <laughs> I, yeah. I forgot oh, but, about that PSA. Yeah. That's fucked, man. Or the other one, don't you put it in your mouth. Don't you put it in your mouth. <laughs> Until you have someone you I know. never really grew up with that one. Okay, so so one. the episode next episode is For Whom yeah. the Bell Trolls, which another, is my favorite episode of this batch. Another one of my favorite episodes. Because it has a bunch of shit. First of all, it has the introduction of Mrs. Appleby. Yeah, I love Mrs. Appleby. She's such a staple to the show. She's great. I want to say a stable. Um, wait, I want to say a, <laughs> wait. Hold on, I want to say a stable. She's just a great character. She is a pretty decent side character, and I'm, I'm okay with that. Yeah. So she did. She, in, she gives great yeah, facial reactions. Yes, to she does. What she does like, have great facial reactions. It, it, she's kind of like Brock Lesnar for the show in a way. <laughs> what? How? Oh, facial expressions? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good facial expressions. Nothing else. Nothing else about Brock is okay. <laughs> uh, so, 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 so for this, Leon. So I, I, I want to say before you begin, the very first note I have for this is uh, th uh, this is the Mr. Tickle Sneezer. <laughs> Tickle Sneezer. Yeah. We will get there. We will fucking get there. So... It's ta it's a show off your ho it's hobby week at the school and at Mrs. Appleby is opening up uh, you know conversations for people to show off their hobbies and of course all of the Power Rangers show off a few of their hobbies uh, fucking uh, I I'm gonna save Trini for last but uh, I'm pretty sure Jason does some karate uh, Zach break dances. Ja and, sorry, uh, hold on, hold on, wait a second, sorry. Jason does the Steve Blackman thing where he just does the weapon stuff. Yeah, he does meow. that. I forget, I forget what Billy does, if Billy does anything. Volcano, volcano. Oh yeah, Billy, Billy does make the volcano and it's like purple volcano stuff and, and Bulk gets in into the volcano. And Mrs. Appleby gives Billy a look of, don't you stain my floor, you bastard. <laughs> You know, I was going to I was going to save this for later, but Mrs. Appleby reminds me of that one viral video of that one teacher who keeps screaming at her child, at her children not to bring pomegranates into class. You need to show me that video later. I don't know what you're talking about. I think there's a follow up video to her reacting to that and being mad about the video. Yeah, uh, that's great. Yeah. So Billy does the volcano. Uh, Jason does the Steve Blackman thing. Uh, Kimberly does a handstand on Mrs. Appleby's desk, which looks pretty impressive. Well, uh, she Zach is a she is a she is a gymnast in real life, though. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But her but Kimberly's hobby is gymnastics. Yeah. Uh, uh, Zach does the break dancing, and it's pretty impressive looking, honestly. Uh, wait, no, sorry. Wait, hobby. wait, wait. Zach did the surfing. Oh, he was surfing. I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. Talk. So he, he, I forgot he surfs. Uh, he's like Johnny Tsunami in a way. Uh, you know what? W wait a minute. Why wasn't he doing hip hop keto? I don't know because he never. We never see him surfing ever again. <laughs> yeah, I guess yeah. that's just more weird character development because he already <laughs> does like martial arts and stuff. You don't need to have him do multiple sports. Uh, but then we get to Trini's hobby, which is clearly the most fucked up of the five. Uh, she collects dolls. Which is terrifying. Which, you know, it, it's normal. You, you think like, oh, she collects, you know, Cabbage Patch Kids or something, you know, relatively normal. No, they're like porcelain dolls from around the world. Like the first one she shows is like a Japanese porcelain doll and it has a kimono on and like it looks pretty impressive. But uh, they're like creepy ass dolls. And then we get to the creepiest one of them all. Mr. Fucking Tickle Sneezer. As a mm -hmm. guy who just like gets creeped out by any doll. This is just creepy to me. 
I am so thankful they decided not to turn that fucking doll into the suit and just use an entirely separate design. Yeah, because holy fuck, the, the the doll itself. Like, I know you're you're editing this, Andreas. Can you just put up a picture of the doll for this small segment? Pickle sneezer uh, or the other yeah, one? Yeah, of the of the doll, not not the monster, the doll. Holy Jesus! What is that? What the fuck is that? Oh right, yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, because like, it, it, it looks terrifying. It looks like the Invisible Man, like the, the old the Universal Invisible Man, but high as fuck and on like 13 different fucking drugs. Because uh, it just, it's got this really scary curled smile. It's like if the troll face was high and I hate it. <laughs> It's fucking terrifying. And they she goes into the legend of Mr. Tickle Sneezer, like how he has like magical powers and how he like collects things. Uh and yeah, no, I fucking hate him. And I'm pretty sure Bulk and Skull also hate him because at the end when everyone leaves, uh they just start picking up Mr. Tickle Sneezer and throwing him back and forth at each other. But wait, yeah, no, I I skipped something again. After the bell rings, Miss Appleby it says, don't forget to uh, read, uh, to do to do your homework. And she talks about what's on the blackboard. Malcolm, did you have what was on the blackboard? Chapter four. I don't. Question marks. Why do we need them? Yeah, it's such a Wait. stupid line. <laughs> Wait, what was on the chalkboard? Question marks. Why do we need them? Chapter four. Question marks. Why do we need them? She even said it in the episode. <laughs> Okay, that is not high school like things that's a, we're learning that's, about. That's, that's kindergarten. That's kindergarten. Yeah. yeah. It just makes me it makes me think, what the fuck were they learning last week? Okay, children. A B C D E F Yeah. Teaching high school kids the alphabet. I mean at least Bulk and Skull would get something out of it. Like when I was in high school when like the kids that actually, well, with the kids that actually were there in fucking high school when they weren't too busy getting high in the park. Yeah. Like, I, I didn't learn this crap. Like, I, like I, was, I was busy writing fucking three, three paragraph long essays about why Streetcar Named Desire is a m monumental piece of literature, not why do we need question marks. <laughs> yeah. And so what's that's funny is I think I had a cooler right? class because I had Blade Runner. Yeah, that's fair. Blade Runner is a pretty... I mean, Streetcar... I liked Streetcar. Anyway, to stop uh, getting off track, so the bell rings, and then Bulk and Skull are throwing the doll, Mr. Tickle Sneezer, the, excuse me, the nightmare around. Uh, and, uh, you know, Jason and Trini eventually get him, get them to stop. Then we crash cut to Trini's room, or as I like to call it, hell. Pretty much is hell, because, like, goddamn, Trini, how many dolls do you like, need? Trini has at least 50 porcelain dolls in her room, and I'm like, how the fuck do you sleep? Very carefully. One of those things is currently looking at you, aiming to kill you. Like, this is, like, this is, you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of Resident Evil Village and the fucking Bien Beneviento house, like the doll house. And it's just, like, there's a bunch of dolls everywhere, and, like, it just makes me think they're going to get like become sentient and kill me. Um, that is okay. That is the least scary thing about that level and that house. If you remember the giant creepy ass fucking fetus. That's in the I basement. wasn't mentioned. I wasn't going to mention the fetus. Calm down. Look, okay. Look that. No, if you mention that house, I can't help but think about that. And you didn't warn me. <laughs> you need to warn him. Or, like, I'm sorry, I didn't. I'm sorry, I didn't warn you about the giant fetus. It's just as scary as Mr. Tickle Sneezer. The Japanese man, they have a direct line to my fucking fear, funny bone. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, um, friggin', uh, oh yeah, I forgot that Rita also sees Mr. Tickle Sneezer and hears about this legend and is like, oh, we could use him. So he get she gets Squat and Babu to uh, go down and uh, steal Mr. Tickle Sneezer. It's a squat. Uh, he just went down. Oh, I thought it was Squat and Babu. I thought they were both there. Okay, my bad. So Squat, Squat goes down and uh, takes uh, Mr. Tickle Sneezer. Uh, actually, a very clean grab and steal from uh, Squat, who is well known to be the fuck up. Must have been a good uh, pickpocket back in the day. 
I guess. Uh, and then, you know, he fell off. Uh, so he goes back, and Rita uh, makes uh, Mr. Tickle Sneezer a real boy. He's a real uh, boy! And, With and a way better design, thankfully. Thankfully, he's a lot less scarier in his monster form, which is awesome. Uh, and it's not even, like, she she doesn't even, like, try to, like, control him through, like, hypnosis or any sort of, like, spell. Uh, she just kind of bullies him into working for her. Yep, it's like, you're working for me now. Deal with it. <laughs> With using the very menacing and mystical fish-eyed lens zoom in on him. Like, ba yeah. uh, back and forth, back and forth. So <laughs> my, my mouth is too... My wide-angle lens is about to burst. To burst. <laughs> <laughs> So he spends uh, this whole episode basically just going around stealing and gathering goodies, and uh, which eventually leads to him stealing the rad bug, I do believe. Or no, no, just, just a car just with car. Uh, Trini and Billy. Like, it's just a car with Trini and Billy in it. Yeah. And like he, he starts off relatively tame with like stealing like a, an empty truck, like an empty taxi. Uh, you know, uh, the some Japanese other thing. Bullet train. And then, and yeah, and no, and then he, I'll get there. And then he steals the car with Bill and Trini, Billy and Trini in it. And then he steals the fucking Tokyo Tower. Yeah. And then he steals a fucking airplane. And then he steals the Japanese bullet train. Like <laughs> thousands of people are on that for their work commute. And you have just fucked up their day, <laughs> Mr. Tickle Sneezer. What about the people in the plane? It's like they're in. It's like imagine I mean, they're, being they're, on the plane. Flights get, I mean, flights get delayed all the time. I'm sure they're fine. But from out of nowhere, they just disappear. Well, there was a the army lost that goddamn jet one time. Yeah. I don't know how the army. I mean, can it's lose not a like jet. they're lost forever. Like literally an hour later, everything gets released. Yeah. Yeah, and um, a few things I want to mention uh, in this uh, that I have in my notes here. Uh, firstly, because uh, after they're all released and we go into the Zord fight, I do mention here that um, they're really starting to experiment with the editing of uh, the of the Zord sequence and the Megazord sequence, sort of experimenting with the editing a bit to find yeah. what looks and feels the coolest. They're still trying um, to play the field, like they're trying to figure their stuff out. But honestly, in hindsight, uh, thinking about uh, this particular Zord sequence, that's not really all I can think about. Because all I can think about is where the hell did that Japanese kid come from, and why did he get so big? <laughs> you gotta watch this, You gotta watch you Ranger to figure it out. Yeah, they're, they're, can you can you throw can you throw up a screen a still of the fucking Japanese kid right next to the Megazord, please? <laughs> okay. <laughs> It's, it's so like awesome. I had to say it. Like why? there's a ja little Japanese boy, right? In why? <laughs> it, it like literally looks like the little Japanese boy is holding the Megazord's hand. Yeah. <laughs> and like, the, so the, the, and then they cut away and they show. Uh, they they show. Editing uh, should be a thing. You know, they they cut back and they show Mr. Tickle Sneezer for a bit, and then they cut back again and there's an explosion around the Megazord, and the fucking kid is still there in the explosion, and then finally runs off screen. <laughs> that giant kid is dead, but he fed a lot of people. Yeah, <laughs> I that that is that is my favorite part of the episode. Is that there's oh, wait, no, wait, oh, oh. There. wait, no, hold on, wait. The kid goes down, the kid dies, and then after credit sequence, you get Ron Perlman coming out of him saying, "Where's my goddamn shoe?" Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure, but don't quote oh, me on this. I'm pretty okay. sure. I'm pretty uh, sure. The, I'm pretty no, sure I'm not going to do that joke. I'm pretty sure the kid died in the Sentai version. I'm not sure. Don't quote me. Thanks on for that. making no. it dark. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I don't want to think about it. Uh, but besides that very obvious point, the Megazord fight isn't much to be like talked about. It's pretty pretty middle of the road. Then we cut back, and uh, it it was a it's dream. all a dream. It was, it was it all was a fucking, dream. It was a fucking dream. God fucking damn. Of course, a fucking dream. And, uh, but we do uh, the wrap up. We I did put a cross next to this episode because it's very minor, but we do get the very first appearance of Balkan Skull's first names. Oh, yeah. And they're the their full, full names, actually. Full names. The full names. Farkas uh, Balkmeyer. And Eugene Scullovich. 
and Eugene Skolovich, which, to be fair, are my two favorite stupid names in, in media <laughs> right now. Let's see. Uh, do I have any more notes here? No, that's pretty much it. Cause, and their oh. hobby is a uh, flea circus. Yeah. So they open up the flea circus, and then Bulk is like, Skull, where, where are we? the fleas? And then they're all over Miss Appleby. Bam, 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 bam. Imagine if she had a tick uh, allergy. She'd be dead. Like, that's what oh, she'd she get. She'd be dead. <laughs> why are now. the end of the... Why is it now we're doing the end of the episodes are super fucking dark? <laughs> I don't know. It's just fun that way. Where are the fleas? On Miss Appleby. Kids, I have a flea allergy. Oh, shit. Dead. <laughs> Is I don't feel so good. <laughs> like uh, the freeze frame happens as she's falling down dead. <laughs> Mr. Cranston, I don't feel so good. <laughs> da, 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 da. Oh right. my god! So and, uh, we now we get to, to uh... the final episode of this episode block, and if you wouldn't mind. I'd like to take this one. So go, go yeah, for no, it. You can go have it. Yeah, no, you, it's, it's, it's sentimental to you. you go, go for ahead. it. Go for it, counselor. Season one, episode 10, Happy Birthday, Zach. The very first episode of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers that I've ever seen. What an episode to see for the first time. So I started out with uh, Dino Thunder and... An episode of SPD that I completely forgot about until I rewatched a couple months back. Um, but this episode, Happy Birthday, Zach, when I was a kid, um, I think I was at like a flea market or something, but I was given a VHS of of a Mighty Morph of a few different episodes. I think two particularly of episodes of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Um, one was the episode High Five, the second ever episode, but uh, the second was this one. And I honestly feel like they filmed this pretty close to like the pilot or the, the day of the dumpster because um, th there's a lot of things here that feel like it was filmed like a story, like story wise immediately afterwards. Like in the beginning, um, we get a shot of the juice bar. Um, after hours, basically late. So we get more development for Ernie, particularly as sort of the kind of sort of six member of the gang, sort of since they're always at the juice bar. They're obviously friends of Ernie. Which I kind of say like, they're not uh, really friends. He, they just go to juice bar. He's like a guy. They know. I mean, they're definitely really, they, they do appreciate Ernie considering how much they can you know, have fun in the fucking community center and juice bar. Yeah. By the way, I forgot and, to mention, uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Malcolm. I'll let you get back. I forgot to mention earlier, um, my favorite part about the juice bar is that they denote that it's a juice bar by a single neon sign that says a juice bar and also <laughs> a single toucan. <laughs> but the full name of the juice center is Ernie's Juice and something, something. It's just yeah, like I, it's know. Yeah, I think it's like Ernie's Juice Bar and Community Center. Yeah, but yeah. like inside it just says Juice Bar, which is hilarious. Yeah. Anyway, back to the recap. So um, Ernie's struggling with more than likely a Billy creation called the Keiko Matic, and oh, uh, yeah. it spits out cake or sorry foam, uh, and because uh, they are preparing for uh, Zach's. Uh, birthday and we we only get the appearance uh i, I like well, what i liked about um this particular uh, uh episode is that we don't get all the rangers at once so i th as like an introduction i thought it was really cool that we got basically um like slow introductions to the rangers like it shows billy's a dork kimberly um is of like the cool one of the group and whatnot because pink usually is uh the valley girl and uh we do actually get a lot of moments of uh trini translating billy in this episode which i liked um yeah but yeah, that is a good thing what i did like is that in this uh in this episode um we get a rita plot which 
I thought kind of works for Rita because she hates the Power Rangers. So she she finds out that it's Zach's birthday. So she's like, I'm like, I'm going to create an evil present for you. Mwahaha. Like that is like old school cheese villain for me. Instead of you gave me a, a, um or like I hate music. I'm going to kill the world or something. Like, or so, that one episode where she, Kimberly was making a float and she just decides I'm just going to destroy it. <laughs> I remember watching that episode and being like, why is, why is Amy, not, why is Kimberly crying over a float? My thought was, why the fuck is Amy Jo Johnson trying so hard in this episode? There's also an episode coming up, I don't know what season it's in, but it's one where Kimberly's like, oh, I, I don't have lipstick, I can't look good for the girls, and then they just summon lip, like, lip syncer because of that. Oh yeah, the lip mon lipstick concert, yeah. So let's see, so we get that, we get um, then the scene with uh, Rita, and then we get Ernie talking to the guys about the Power Rangers, and we get a oh, line yeah. that confuses me. Yeah, 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 we had a huge de like five minute debate about the val validity of this of this line. Go ahead. And and I think Andres is right because he basically says, <laughs> you know, that they're kind of like what Batman does for Gotham City. Is Batman canon in fucking Power Rangers? And if so, why is it George Clooney? No, no, no. It's nineteen ninety three. It's Michael Keaton. No, look, just because it's 93, I'm telling you, with the way Power Rangers is, it would not be Michael Keaton. There would, would be, be nipples Clooney. on that bat suit. So not Val there Kilmer? There would be badass and bat nipples. So not Val Kilmer, then? I, you know what? Maybe I'll give you Val Kilmer. I'm not going to say agree with Clooney. Val Kilmer. Because, yeah, because George Clooney was worst of the worst. And I feel like, no, no. Wait, I got it. I got it. Clooney is the batman for turbo yes yeah i agree yeah i still think it like I, I i still don't know how i feel about this line because immediately everyone's like oh this means batman is canonically real in the power rangers universe i just think that it's just because the comics are there well the turtles are real in this universe but we'll get to that when they we get to that oh god i forgot about that yeah, no, don't worry. It's only one episode, and we don't have to deal with it for very long. So, yeah. um, in this sort of conversation that they're talking uh, and whatnot, I we get my very first appearance of Balkan Skull, and in my in my opinion, for an introduction to these characters, this episode has a really good uh, introduction for Balkan Skull. It has some of my favorite comedy work that we've even seen so far like i like a lot of their stuff but the stunt work they do um the, i gotta mention the balloon because adam loved this bit too. yeah the balloon was great uh bulk is like uh reacting to kimberly laughing at uh skull being a doofus and he goes <laughs> <laughs> and then he squeezes the balloon that Do doesn't pop it he just squeezes all the air out of it like elastic uh, like snaps it like an elastic band and then just drops it <laughs> it's fucking amazing it, i have never seen anyone do that with a balloon uh back when i was a kid and since and it's just oh uh, and skull never change i if i can get them on this podcast that would oh be my amazing. God. God, if I could actually speak to Paul and Jason, that'd be crazy. That'd be I, I, I think uh, all we could ask them is, uh, how many times did you bring uh, a 9 millimeter into a Denny's? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, he'd, he'd leave. He'd leave immediately. <laughs> Well, you'd think you'd think but... what the fuck man oh that's, that's amazing that's an actual story okay that's an actual story because oh, during yeah. filming when they were out in the desert um they uh would just hunt animals uh i think it was like uh paul jason are you talking about when they were in australia uh, uh paul jason narvi and jason david Wait, hold on. Was this when yeah. they were make were in Australia making a movie? 
I want to say so, yeah. And they're and and they literally was just like, can we just go get Denny's or something? And they go, and um, I believe it's Jason Narvi, the actor who plays Skull, who goes uh, like he's like checking himself, and he's like, I have a nine. I brought a nine millimeter to this Denny's, or no, it was like a semi-auto actually, or something. He brought a gun to a Denny's. Nineteen eleven to this Denny's. <laughs> Hi, yeah, I, I unfortunately, uh, the nuclear codes, uh, I accidentally released them and our location, so, <laughs> it's like, I brought, Skull, I brought why do you have nuclear codes? I brought these nuclear codes to a fucking Chipotle. <laughs> I think I remember this story. It's starting to come back now. <laughs> Hi, uh, yes, so uh, we... is there some place where I can code check my minigun? Yeah, I, I I brought this Gatling gun to this Wendy's. I'm sorry. But, so continuing on with this, this episode, man, Jason yeah. Narvi, why do you always make things go off track, even when you're not here? Yeah. He's a fucking legend. That's why. That is true. Thank, thank you very much. Um, yeah, I even have in my notes my personal favorite bulk and skull jokes. Um, we have. A few things. One, uh, when Rita goes to Finster, I don't know if I talk about Finster too much, but um, they're going through a booklet of all these different monsters, which I loved looking at when uh, when I was a kid, too, uh, with the sampling of this episode, because it gave a brief um, sort of preview to all these different monster designs, including my personal favorite monster of the week, just strict design, uh, King Sphinx. King Sphinx from episode. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's fair. That's fair. King Sphinx is great. He actually, in the Sentai, I believe, is he's my brother. Yeah, in the Sentai, yeah, he's he actually is, Goldar's he brother. He is Goldar's brother in the Sentai. Yes, he is. Oh, and Malcolm, do you know that in the Sentai, Goldar is actually married to Scorpina? Lammy, yeah. Yeah. Just wanted to let that you know he, that. Okay, I need you to clear this up, but, like... Isn't King Sphinx used in in the uh, pilot? In the one pilot, of the yeah. Yes, I, I want to believe King Sphinx is the monster pilot. Yeah, yeah. and, and pilot he, he's called Fly Guy in the pilot. Uh, Goldar's Fly Guy, and they call the other guy Ugly Guy or something. Yeah, that yeah that that that's fucking stupid. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, we get so. Uh, one of the more unique monster creations of uh the early episodes that isn't just the monster omatic uh we get like the forging of the sword we get rita saying a spell um i, I always the thought this of the black cool. knight the nasty knight uh who uh we get footage of rita talking about how he was defeating a great warrior aka uh you uh the black Jew ranger Gengi. yeah Angie, yes, and uh, he and then the defeated the, boy though. Boy, boy is undefeatable. Uh, boy is the yellow ranger. Yeah, boy. And, and then we get um, the kind of sort of filler of this episode is oh yeah, uh, so they're cleaning up and um, they need to uh, because they're dressing up the juice bar for uh, Zach's the birthday, birthday party. party. And and then they do, a, I think, something similar they did in a couple episodes where they speed up the footage and play that we need to hurry up and clean up music. Yeah, they did. They did a fucking big comfy couch 10 second tidy. I do love that. But, we, but, but what I love about that is the editing with the music, because then we just get Zach in the background uh, or just his voice just going. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> so fucking stupid. I love it's, like, it. it's like we are hearing what we sound like when we sing to ourselves when we're walking down the sidewalk. Yes. Yeah. This is how we sound to other people when we sing. Yeah. It's terrible. This is like how I sounded when I first heard my stand-up set, and I'm like, oh god, I hate that. You were good. No, I mean no. The jokes. I wasn't, wasn't great, about the good. joke. It wasn't about the jokes. It was about how I like my voice. Oh yeah, oh, no, right. you're in your yeah. own voice. Will always throw you. Off. Yeah, it's always um, to throw you off. Yeah. Yeah. So, so then we get uh, the big conflict of this episode is everyone. Uh, Zach thinks everyone forgot his birthday, and that leads to him wandering in the desert. 
Well, yeah, he mean, went to the everyone, mountain. He went to like, the mountain. Everyone was a dick, like especially Kimberly, t- saying right in front of his face that like, oh, someone really important to me has a birthday, and he's like, oh yeah, who is that? Oh, I can't tell you who they are, but I, I really need to go and uh, tell her that it, I appreciate her her birthday. And she's like, uh, and he's like, oh, I'm pretty sure she'll wait. Did you say she? Yeah, her poodle. She's like, yeah, her poodle has a birthday, and he's instead of saying happy birthday to one of her four best friends, she's like, "Fuck you, my dog's <laughs> birthday is today." And then they all go to class, but Zach just skips school and just goes to the mountains. And just goes to the desert. <laughs> yeah, they never put that together. They're supposed to be like the good, like prep school kids that always do the right thing. But Zach just skips, un- unless like I think he did say yeah, like a free period. Uh, he didn't say he had a free period. He was going to. No, class, I don't think but... he. I don't, I don't know if he did, or it could have been like after school. I guess. Yeah, it was just a weird cut. Um, yeah, and, and then uh, we get um, the first morph I ever saw. Uh, for Mighty Morphin, as soon as uh, we get the appearance of the Nasty Knight, and he starts to fight Zack, and it, I want, I, I, I never, I don't know if I have given my opinion on the morphing sequence of the original season, but series, but it's, it's iconic. But I will say, going backwards from when I first started with Dino Thunder, it because that. It, with that being my very first Power Ranger season, it just like kind of jarring to see how normal it is. Then, it, exactly. But I can't deny, even with that time and age gap of missing mm-hmm. out on, I want to say, fifteen seasons of Power Rangers beforehand, it was definitely still a lot of kicks ass. Yeah, it does. But I, I do have a hang up about it. <laughs> it's- like I, it's something only I would notice, but genuinely, uh, it does kind of throw me off that when they're in the morphing sequence and you know you're seeing them in like the fucking morpher, uh, all you, all they, I like you can't see their chest. It's literally just their arms and their head. I always and thought I, uh, that their shirt just blended into the background. It, it definitely is their. They wore a green. They all wore like a green shirt or something, and like blew up, bled into the you know green or blue screen or whatever. But like, dude, come on, you look like Rayman. So in this fight, what I found was cool is the Nasty Knight could actually stand up to the um the Rangers, particularly with like sending their energy back at them, and that fried their weapons. Yes, it did, and it was it was actually a pretty good fight scene, honestly. Like it, like I know it's Sentai footage mostly, but like it is a pretty good fight scene. Yeah, when they do, in, the, in later when, they episodes, do when, they, when they do footage right, it does look it does blend in together really well. And uh, in this fight, we get um, uh, Zordon and Alpha, which. I gotta say, first impressions on Alpha, or uh, Alpha was cool, I always thought, when I was a kid, and I I know some people found him annoying, like adults found him annoying. I yeah. never really did. I, I liked Alpha. I liked Alpha, too. Yeah, I, like, the I, early episodes of Alpha, he's kind of he's kind of cringe, but they got away from that, and he became the Alpha we all loved. Yeah, it, it's just like, it, it, in my eyes, I found it criminal that Bulk and Skull never kind of sort of found out where the Rangers were, because I would have loved Bulk and Skull and Alpha as a trio. Uh, they kind of did, but I ain't saying it. Well, I, I mean, like, as a regular actual trio, though, because I feel like the comedic gold with, like, like, imagine if, like, Bulk and Skull, they basically worked as, like, crowd control. Right. For the Rangers. That's what everyone was saying. Yeah. Even Link Hara said that. Like, imagine if Bulk and Skull were part of the team where Kyle controls. Like, hey, look over they here. They got, I, I will say, in the comics, I want to tell this to Adam, uh, Bulk and Skull actually were turned into Rangers in the comics. No. Uh, the purple and orange Rangers. But they turned Bulk into a pig. <laughs> Damn. Of course they did. But here's the funny thing. They turned Skull into, like, a fucking ostrich with, like, a giant-ass nose. They should have turned him into a hyena. It would have been perfect. Yes, he That's better. what I was thinking! Hyena. Hyena That's skull. That's literally what I was thinking. Why wasn't it a hyena? 
like why even a pig you should have made it like a a boar or oh i don't know a ram yeah that too. because that that is the animal he gets in hyperforce we'll get oh, hyperforce yeah. eventually yeah. yeah fair 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 um, um but then yeah, we sure. get uh the morph we get the fight and then I want to comment about the, uh, cause we, we do get the, uh, oh yeah, they fight and then Rita just turns the night big for no reason. Yeah, mm-hmm. he, she, he was doing and, well. He was doing well. And, and, we, and also I didn't know magic staff make my monster grow as a thing because she literally just said, take that wise guy and throws her staff. Yeah, so what the fuck? Yeah, but, like I said, they're like mixing it up at these episodes, trying to get their groove, trying to figure out what to do. In my personal opinion, I think that this Zord sequence, the forming of the Megazord, is my favorite of the different editing versions of it because it it is the longest. But I, I find that they it, like it, it. It was the right sequence of events for me. Hmm. It it, it tickles my it tickles the autistic side of me. It tickles your sneezer. <laughs> oh fuck's sake! God, yes. I'm gonna I'm gonna see him in my nightmares. God damn it! Put the doll back up. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, we we get the Megazord fight where the power sword actually doesn't even completely do the job right away, which it's usually the immediate win. Yeah. Um, yes. That's usually but the formula. It, but then Zach actually, which also wraps around it being sort of his story, he saw he comes up with the way to defeat the monster. And I guess it's really funny editing. Uh, um, uh, this really funny. Uh, they do this really funny editing choice where um, the Megazord is on the ground and he immediately just like Megan's his way back up. Without even he, using his hands. Reverse the footage. Yeah, he just like, I guess in kayfabe he kips up, but they really do just reverse the footage. Yeah, they do that a lot. I, I love it show. so much. Like reverse and, the footage. Uh, and, and then we get um, uh, Rita. In fact, after uh, the nasty night goes down, we get a like, I'll come back. I'll get you next time. Get it sort of moment. I was wondering why you were doing Dr. Claw. And and, and then we get... Yeah, it was not a good Dr. Claw. And and then we get um, just, unfortunately, a lack of... I have a headache. Oh, by the way, because the last episode or the episode before that, we're at five now. Yeah, we're uh, at five headaches. And then, of course, we get the big birthday celebration, and we get... Uh, a really 90s happy birthday song, which I want to find out who did that Happy, song happy because... birthday, Zach. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was very cringe, but also... Are you uh, kidding? Cake That's going to be playing at every single birthday party of mine now. I mean, I'm glad you liked it. <laughs> I un- ironically think I love that song. Fair and enough. and the editing choice of Zach doing his like dancing and then it cuts mm-hmm. to Billy with the Keiko Maddox struggling in the background. And now and now it's spitting out pink foam instead of blue foam. And uh we don't get the usual uh end of episode stingers, so I'll all I'll say is <laughs> What you saying? You kinda of, you kinda of cut I out there. That, I love that it cut out when he went to sing it. What you, you cut it you it he cut was out singing man. happy, happy birthday. Oh hey, babe, uh, and uh, that's it. That's it for uh, this episode block. So but, uh, well, well, I'll do it anyway. Dun, 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 dun. And then dun, the cops, dun. and then the cops come in and shut down the party because of noise violation. Yeah. <laughs> so let's go through our thoughts of this six episode block. Who is gonna go first? At, uh. Adam, show sure, go first since you're like brand yeah, new. Yeah, I'll go first since I'm the new guy. Uh, these were the first six episodes of Mighty Morphin I had ever watched, and. Uh, I'm going to be real. I definitely started off kind of meh on it. Like the first two or three episodes were like, I mean, I can see the appeal and it's kind of meh. But we get to those last three and uh, specifically I Guy and uh, Tickle Sneezer were two of my favorite episodes of anything related to Sentai. 
<laughs> that I've seen in a while. Uh, and I know that's saying a lot, but uh, like it's it, it like it's a completely different beast from Sentai, and I get that. But uh, it's definitely I it, it's very fun, and uh, the Tickle Sneezer episode specifically is my favorite episode so far. Uh, it it that episode alone was the reason I wanted to get into the get into this podcast. So <laughs> it was Tickle Sneezer. It tickle was Tickle Sneezer. It was Tickle Sneezer all along. along. Tickle Sneezer turned me into a Power Rangers fan. Congratulations. God damn it, we did it. But we did it. Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. We got him. Yeah. Clap, 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 so, clap. Overall, I'll go through each episode. Uh, episode five was a decent introduction. I liked the moral and I liked the whole deaf girl arc, and that was pretty cool. Episode six was uh, that was not that was before Big Sisters. That oh yeah that was food uh, fight food fight that was yeah that was food fight food fight very good episode uh pudgy pig is a iconic monster of the week and uh it was very fun uh the per- the per- the principal is a fucking creepazoid and I hate him but overall the the show is very the episode was very good big sisters was definitely the weakest episode of the six for me uh it wasn't bad it just there was nothing there that I really enjoyed except for the whole Matt morphing masters thing and hearing you guys like bust a nut to the realization. Our shit. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I guy was a very good episode. It was I... the strongest. Of, it was the second strongest of the batch, even though I kind of hated, uh, I guys, I, I every five seconds by the end of it. Uh, I really enjoyed it. Uh, Tickle Sneezer was my favorite episode of the block. Uh, it had it had cliches, but it also had like really fun things to do with those cliches. Uh, the the only the only thing I can say was like a real knock to the entire thing was the it was all a dream cliche because I fucking hate that cliche. Oh, it's so uh, stupid. Yes, it's such a it's such a stupid cliche. It's like it, it's like the coma theory. I fucking hate it. Uh, but besides that, it was a really good episode, really solid stuff. And Tickle Sneezer is fun, uh, except for, you know, the doll. Uh, but very, very good episode. Happy birthday, Zach, was I'm going to say it, Malcolm, don't hate me. It was a step down from Tickle Sneezer, but it was very fun. It was a cool thing. Everyone was addicted to Zach, which is unfortunate, but uh, it was very fun. So overall, I, I really f- good. I feel like you got to justify it with like the birthday thing. It's like. The, the, they yeah. even say it. It's like he's he's upset now, but when his birthday, uh, but 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 well, well, when he sees the party, he's gonna freak. Yeah, I I totally get it. It's just just I don't know. I I'm just kind of used to people being dicks, so maybe that's <laughs> part of it. But uh, no, genu- genu- genuinely, these were good. These were really good six episodes, and I'm totally psyched to continue doing this with you guys. Uh, on to the next one. Uh, let, let's go with Andreas next. What are your thoughts? Sorry, wait, hold on. Let's go with Zoif next. Oh, you okay. want to be last? Why can't Malcolm be last? <laughs> I don't know. Tickle then Caesar. Go. go for it, Andreas. <laughs> okay, so yeah. It's always great to see these episodes again because like, no matter how many times I rewatch this stuff, it's always great. But I haven't seen this. I haven't rewatched the episodes in so long because like, like I said, like the Morphine Masters thing got me. Uh, but like I say, uh, that's all I can say is that it's always great to watch these episodes. And the next episode is my uh, the one that creeps me out the most because it's got got clowns in it. <laughs> oh, oh the, the, the next episode is clowns of yeah. Christ. Um, this is a really good episode block. At first, I thought it was going to be very filler heavy, but like the last three or four episodes were like for some reason so important to this bloody show like i had no idea how big the first 10 episodes technically were for the show you had i guy tickle sneezer pudgy pig i don't think the nasty knight was that big but he is to me damn it well he you is. know he's, he's the nasty knight is very cool the nasty knight is one of those iconic villains they don't talk about him much oh, he but is? he's one of the iconic villains yeah because he, he should be, man. He's fucking awesome. It's like, why couldn't he come back and not Pudgy Pig? Yeah. We'll get to that when we get to that. Yes. But 
I got to say, I'm so happy I got to watch Happy Birthday, Zach, with you guys. Out of all the episodes we've watched, this is the one I was legit most excited for. Even more than Green with Evil, if I'm being honest. Yeah, because you were, like, going on about it. Happy Birthday, Zach. You, we got to get to Happy Birthday, Zach. <laughs> It's because, it's, to me, Happy Birthday, Zach, doesn't represent my, like, love for Mighty Morphin. It represents my love for Power Rangers as a whole. Very true. It's mm-hmm. like, it's like you, you never forget your first, your be- beginning. And right. That's why. With I... me, the first three seasons of Power Rangers, I remember Mighty Morphin, Dino Thunder, and SPD. Very true. And like you said, like you never forget your first. That's why season one will always be number one in my heart. Mm -hmm. And you know what? A toast to Adam, an official new Power Rangers fan. Yeah. We welcome you. you, We apologize. And we welcome you again. And we apologize again. And may the power protect you. Mm. May the power protect you, my friend. Thank All you right. very much. Yeah, yeah no, that's going to be fun. All and right. I can't wait to keep doing this. All right. So with that, we end the podcast for the next for today. Until the next time, we'll get to uh, the next six episodes. And we're going to stop for the sixth episode. Because after that, it's what y'all been waiting for. Because you know what's Our coming up. The green was evil arc. The green oh, was evil in the arc. But we got to get through the next six episodes to do that. Anyways, that's it for the podcast. I'm Humanoid. And... The rest of these people here. the power here. protect you. I've been Dead Troop, and this is my opinion. Uh, also, uh, don't forget that the Yellow Ranger is named Boy. And he's a boy. <laughs> In the Sentai. And I am the boy. I speak for the trees. And for some unknown goddamn reason, I speak Vietnamese. And ladies and gentlemen, may the power protect you. God damn it, Dwayne. <laughs>